Chapter 11 Your wife is trying to pull you, after one last dubbing session, Yu Dong walked out of the recording booth with her script and saw Xiang Xiaoyu with a slovenly posture while eating apples. Yu Dong shook her head and said, Boss, why are you so arrogant today? You're being a little too crude with your legs wide open. There's no one else here, you've seen me in my underwear while in university, so you don't count. Xiaoyu handed Yu Dong an apple. Yu Dong looked at the huge apple being offered and her jaw already felt tired just from seeing it. So she shook her head and sat next to Xiaoyu on the sofa and said, Hey, when picking a new project, could you maybe find a better one? This TV series was so melodramatic I almost gagged a couple of times while I was dubbing. Ha, huh, that's why I didn't dub it myself. Xiang Xiaoyu gloated. You're going to have to pay me more if the next TV show is as awful as this one. Yu Dong said, only half joking. I actually do have another job, it's called Brothers Baby Sweetheart, if you're willing to dub the main female lead, I'll double your commission. Get lost. Just hearing the title made her want to throw up. Xiang Xiaoyu laughed, and after finishing her apple said, never mind. It's still pretty early. Let's go clothes shopping. Yu Dong turned towards a clock, and seeing that it was only 3 pm, nodded happily. Driving her red BMW, Xiaoyu passed by several shopping malls, and Yu Dong couldn't help but ask, Miss Xiaoyu, where exactly do you plan on going? I'm taking you to a private boutique. Xiaoyu said, Nowadays, clothes sold in malls use low quality fabrics, wear it once and it'll fall apart. Okay. I'll listen to you. Xiang Xiaoyu's taste had always been very reliable, so Yu Dong was rest assured. When we get there, find an extra dress to wear for Xing Xin's engagement party next month. Xin Xin? Yu Dong thought for a moment and finally recalled something. She asked, a little uncertain, Ren Xing Xin? Yeah? Why do you look so surprised? Did she not invite you? Xiang Xiaoyu wondered, invite? Yu Dong did recall being invited, but at that time she was so inconsolable from her breakup with Fang Hua, she ended up not attending. Then, two years later she heard that Ren Xingxin committed suicide. Yu Dong hasn't heard that name in over seven or eight years. What's up with that face? I'm asked you something. Yu Dong came back to herself and smiled, nothing. I was just thinking about the three of us. I had the longest lasting relationship, but it ended when I graduated. You had countless boyfriends and is now only left with ex-boyfriends. Xinxin never fell in love during our time in university, but now she's the first to be married. What countless boyfriends? You exaggerate too much. Then how many boyfriends have you had, do you think? Wait, let me count. Xiang Xiaoyu pondered for a while and found that she couldn't remember the exact number. Countless. Yu Dong sneered. But how can Xingxin be someone who had never fell in love? Xiang Xiaoyu said, she and her fiancé are childhood sweethearts. What? Then in the four years of university, why haven't I seen Xingxin's fiancé once? Yu Dong was confused. I guess she didn't want to talk about such things while we were in school. Anyway. It's useless to think about such things now that we've graduated. We'll just have to see when we go to the engagement party next month. Xiang Xiaoyu looked ahead and slowed down when she saw the boutique. Here? Yu Dong looked around curiously and found that they were in a quiet residential area. The designer is quite well known in China, and occasionally works for a few third tier stars. Xiang Xiaoyu brought Yu Dong to a red villa. Yu Dong admired the surrounding scenery while she walked, the villa had a pretty garden layout, damn. Xiang Xiaoyu suddenly cursed, the world really is small. What's the matter? Yu Dong was puzzled and turned her head, only to find two other people inside. It seems that the boutique already has a few guests, one of them being Yu Dong's ex-boyfriend Fang Hua. Let's just come back some other time. Xiaoyu suddenly said, come on. What are you saying? Why should we be the ones to leave? Yu Dong said indifferently as she strode in. Yu Dong? The first one that noticed Yu Dong wasn't Fang Hua, but another man. Yu Dong had no idea who he was. Fang Hua heard Zen call out and turned his head, seeing Yu Dong. His face immediately turned ugly. What's wrong with your face? You look constipated. She hasn't done anything yet. He dares to show such a face. Ha ha. 
PFFFT, Zen and Xiang Xiaoyu laughed at the same time. You. Fang Hua turned red as he pointed at Yu Dong, unable to speak. I haven't seen you in a while and you already mastered the mother-in-law scolding posture? Yu Dong praised him. Ha ha ha. Xiang Xiaoyu laughed wildly and had to support herself with Yu Dong's shoulder. Li Zen stood awkwardly, desperately trying to hold his laughter in. You shouldn't go too far, Yu Dong. Yu Dong completely ignored Fang Hua. Instead, she turned towards Xiang Xiaoyu and said, what have you been eating so heavy? Fang Hua was angry at Yu Dong's attitude and wanted to say something. But Li Zen caught him and advised, don't make a scene, Sister Anu is here. Fang Hua could only endure, staying silent. Are you clothes shopping too? Li Zen asked the girls with a smile. Yes. Xiang Xiaoyu and the men apparently knew each other. I heard you were on TV? Yeah, I fortunately managed to get a role. Li Zheng stayed modest, then turned towards the silent Yu Dong, complimenting her, I haven't seen you in a while, you've become beautiful Yu Dong. Yu Dong thought hard, but couldn't remember this person. He was probably just one of the scum man's friends anyway so Yu Dong didn't hold back, thank you, but I have to warn you. The man next to you is a total scam. You don't need to buy him gifts. Your money would be better spent buying clothes for yourself. What are you talking about? When do I spend other people's money? Fang Huangrily said, didn't I pay you back when we broke up? Oh, I thought the 10,000 yuan was a breakup fee? Yu Dong said without an ounce of embarrassment. You. Whether it was paying Yu Dong back or a breakup fee, neither sounded very good. Zheng could see that Yu Dong was far better at cornering Fang Hua so he had to pull the person aside, then rush to placate Yu Dong, never mind us, we'll be sitting on that side, why don't you two go ahead and look at the clothes, ha ha, look at his stupid look, Xiang Xiaoyu said gleefully, at this moment, the shop assistant came up to them and politely asked the two girls what kind of clothes they needed, where are all your new designs, Xiaoyu was familiar with the process, come with me please, the pretty clerk guided the two girls to a showroom on the other side of the room and said, These mannequins are wearing our new designs, if you want to try them on directly, there are changing rooms over there, no need to ask an assistant. The two nodded and the clerk stepped aside. A boutique like this usually didn't need to sell the clothes to the guests. They let their customers choose freely, only providing their service when requested. Xiang Xiaoyu quickly picked up three sets of clothes and Yu Dong took two. They went into the dressing rooms to try them on. As they entered, they happened to cross paths with a sweet looking girl who was leaving. That's Lina, the evening host of the city TV station. Xiaoyu suddenly said, the woman who just left. Yu Dong nodded and continued, no wonder. She looked classy. You're being stupid. Think a little said Xiang Xiaoyu, Fang Hua and that woman work at the same TV station, I heard that Lina's partner was recently arrested for taking drugs, it also looks like the station's looking for new people, you mean she's thinking of making Fang Hua her new partner? Yu Dong said, but there are people who think Fang Hua's IQ is so minuscule, he would probably fumble hosting the weather forecast, you're too venomous. Or you couldn't help but take a second to pity that scum. Hurry and try on your clothes. Yu Dong couldn't tell her that she had been reborn and couldn't remember ever seeing Fang Hua on TV with Lena. Yu Dong tried her two pieces, and finally picked out a sky blue dress. It looked fresh and made her look bright and eye catching. That dress looks good on you. Yu Dong saw that it was Li Enna who complimented her, so she nodded and politely said, Thank you. Your clothes fit you too. Fang Hua looked at Yu Dong with dumbfounded eyes. Could it be that he never actually noticed how pretty Yu Dong was? It suits you very well. Lu Zheng also exclaimed. Yu Dong simply smiled and said nothing. Next to him Fang Hua also thought she looked nice, but didn't dare say anything. He was afraid Yu Dong would insult him in front of sister Inna. Dong Dong, do I look better with this, or this rose patterned one? Xiang Xiaoyu opened the curtain, holding a skirt against her waist for comparison. The rose won. Yu Dong said, it's not too loud. Xiang Xiaoyu hesitated a little. The large roses on the skirt were lovely, but she was afraid she would be overshadowed by the pattern. No. 
Yudong said, your beauty won't be beaten by that skirt. All right, I'll try it again. Yudong's taste in fashion was completely untrustworthy to Xiangxi Oyu, but recently her aesthetics improved uh, a lot, so she decided to try it. When the curtain was opened again, Xiangxi Oyu seemed to have become the epitome of beauty. The large roses on her skirt made her look warm and beautiful. Two men were wide-eyed and Liina couldn't help but say, she was right, this makes you look gorgeous. Xiang Xiaoyu was very satisfied and rushed towards Yu Dong to say, I'll buy this one then. The clerk came over after hearing this and asked, would you like to wear this now or pack it up? I'll wear it out. After talking Xiaoyu asked Yu Dong, are you getting that dress? Yu Dong nodded and said, help me pay for this. Just deduct what I owe from my commission fees. Xiang Xioi agreed and handed her card directly to the clerk. Please ring me up to wrap up all the clothes I tried. Lian also handed her card to the clerk and turned to Fang Huan lay eyes and to say, The clothes in this boutique are really nice, thank you for bringing me. It was no trouble at all, we were also heading this way anyway. Fang Hua rushed to answer. Zen nodded with a smile at the jewelry case. Xiang Xiaoyu whispered to Yu Dong, look they're totally sucking up to her. Ever since they got here Yu Dong had done nothing but demean Fang Hua at every opportunity, but when she saw this she said nothing. Instead, she simply smiled and picked up a pair of earrings, trying them on and asking her friend, does this look good? Yeah, matches your dress. Xiang Xiaoyu looked at her for a while before commenting. A necklace would complete the whole outfit though. The clerk came back at this time and passed the three girls their bags. Lena took her bag and rushed to leave, nodding towards the two girls as she left. Zen smiled and followed after her. Fang Hua was the last to leave, and as he passed by he looked at Yu Dong, seeming to want to say something, but didn't in the end. Yu Dong settled the bill for earrings, then they left for the parking lot. They originally planned to go to have dinner together. But when they were halfway to their drive, Xiaoyu was summoned by her mother and could only abandon Yu Dong on the roadside. Yu Dong oriented herself and realized that she was quite close to the hospital Xia Feng worked in. She thought about the past couple of days, with Xia Feng doing day shifts. Every day when she went out to work, Xia Feng would just be returning home. When she would wake up in the afternoon, Xia Feng would have already left for the hospital. It's already been several days since they actually sat down together. So Yu Dong went to the hospital, taking out her phone, about to call Xia Feng. But then she realized that he might be busy, and afraid of interrupting him, sent him a text message instead. Are you busy? Yu Dong waited for a while, but a reply never came. She thought he must be quite busy. Yu Dong looked around and went to a roadside tea shop to order a cup of milk tea and leisurely waited for a reply. About 20 minutes later, Xia Feng responded. Just finished. Do you want to have dinner together? I'm outside your hospital. Yu Dong glanced around and spotted a western restaurant across the street. She then typed, there's a good western restaurant nearby, we could eat steak. Go ahead and eat. There's too many things going on in the hospital that I'm afraid I'd have to run back halfway through our meal. Yu Dong sipped her milk tea and thought for a bit before replying back. Well, actually, I forgot to bring money. Wait for me there. This time, Xia Feng's reply was instantaneous. Yu Dong smiled willfully and headed towards the restaurant with her shopping bags. Hospital. Xiao Yifan noticed Xia Feng had taken off his white coat and was about to go out. Surprised, he said. Are you going back? No, Yu Dong's eating at the restaurant across the street outside and forgot to bring money. I'm going to go down and help her settle the bill. Xia Feng explained. Oh, suddenly a petite nurse knocked on their office door and said, Dr. Xia, the director wanted to speak with you. All right. Xia Feng promised to come, but suddenly remembered Yu Dong and became conflicted. The director is looking for you. That must be about the exchange program with Edwards Hospital. I heard that they'd be announcing the candidates in two days. Xiao Yifan seemed a lot more exited than Xia Feng. What are you still standing around here for? Hurry and go to the director's office. Then I'll call Yu Dong first. Why call? Don't you just need to hand her some money? I'll go for you. Xiao Yifan felt like such a loyal friend as he said these words. So the eager Yu Dong ended up waiting for the peacock like Xiao Yifan. Entering the restaurant, 
Xiao Yifan felt that this girl looked more beautiful every time he sees her. Today, she was wearing a bright and refined dress. He couldn't help but sigh in his heart that Xia Feng was quite lucky to have picked up such a girl to be his wife. Not only was she gentle and filial, but also looked like she had a good temperament. Hello, I'm Xia Feng's colleague and friend, Xiao Yifan. We've met before? Xiao Yifan had already seen Yudong several times before. After all, Yudong had visited Mother Xiu every day. What about Xia Feng? Xia Feng's busy. He asked me to come and help you settle the bill instead. Xiao Yifan said. Too many patients? No, the director just asked for him to talk about something. Xiao Yifan said, he was worried about you, so I volunteered to help him contact you. Have you finished eating? Should we ask for the bill now? Yudong looked at Xiao Yifan and gave him a slightly bitter smile. May I take your order, madam? A waiter suddenly came over and asked, No, just help me pay for the table and drinks. She handed the waiter 100 yuan. Xiao Yifan blinked and looked at waiter's hands. Suddenly he was very confused. You dot you have money. Dr. Xiao, the next time I invite my husband to dinner, you don't have to be so enthusiastic about taking his place. Xia Feng dot your wife was trying to pull you, you know. Chapter 12 Love Poems When Xiao Yifan returned to the hospital, he seriously thought that Xia Feng married an unusual wife. He didn't understand what Yu Dong was planning, and started to worry for his good brother. Why are you shaking your head? Did you see Yu Dong? When Xia Feng came back to the office after talking with the director, he saw Xiao Yifan shaking his head and asked this. I saw her. Xiao Yifan looked at Xia Feng as if he wanted to say more but didn't. What's with your face? Xia Feng thought he looked like there was something stuck in his throat. Dot I want to see you more. Why are you being disgusting? Xia Feng suddenly felt uncomfortable. Anyway, did you Dong say anything? Did you help me explain? Do you care about her opinion? Xiao Yifan suddenly asked. You've been outside for less than 10 minutes. How did you lose your brain on the way back? What's with all the inconsequential questions? Xia Feng said impatiently, it's possible. Xiao Yifan saw the displeasure in Yudong's eyes when he met her and now felt that his IQ had been beaten down. Forget it, I'll just call her myself. Xia Feng took out his phone as he said this. Ah, there's no need, I've met the person and explained already. Xiao Yifan stopped Xia Feng before he could call. I've suddenly realized that you and Yudong quite match each other. Weren't you just going to observe in the sidelines? Xia Feng wondered, what's with this sudden enlightenment? Ha ha, it's just that I saw your wife's true colors. It's inevitable, sooner or later you'll end up in her hands. By the way did the director talk to you about the exchange program in America? Xiao Yifan changed the topic. Xia Feng nodded and said, the director said that the two American experts were very interested in my new treatment plan, so they invited me to the States. Yes. Xiao Yifan praised the way, others desperately study to get a chance, you on the other hand was simply invited, the gap is too large, keep your voice down or you'll pull other people's ire. Xia Feng glared at him, what are you nervous about, as a genius, you have to be prepared to bear the jealousy of ordinary people. Xiao Yifan saw that Xia Feng was getting really angry at him, so he quickly backtracked and said, okay, okay. I won't say anything more. So you're going to America next month? Yes. Xia Feng nodded and said, there's actually only a few days left. I still have documents to prepare, help me out. By the time Xia Feng came home, it was already 1 am and the room was empty, with only the small lamp on the desk still on. Xia Feng changed slippers, took out his phone, turned on the radio function, skillfully tuned to Yu Dong's channel and Yu Dong's light voice began to fill the room. Hello everybody, this is FM 9666, you are listening to Midnight Phantom with DJ Fish Jelly. After Yu Dong skillfully said her opening lines, she picked up an envelope and said, it's been a while since I started hosting Midnight Phantom, and while Fish Jelly admits to being a talented host, I never would have expected that listener friend would write to me so soon. When our staff passed me the letter, I was shocked. Now let's see what this listener friend wrote. When Yu Dong opened the envelope, 
She found a $100 bill along with the letter. Yudong became a little embarrassed. It seems that we'll have to be little indulgent today. This is a love letter written by Frank, from France, to a Chinese girl who he has a crush on. The letter says that they've been pen pals for more than 10 years. In order to pursue his beloved girl, Frank applied to a university in China and is now studying Chinese in a language school. Frank tried to translate his letter using Baidu but I can approximate his words and can see his intentions. Yudong continues, but I'd like to remind this foreign friend, our radio station doesn't accept money, so next time you don't need to shove a $100 bill with your letters. As Yudong continues to speak, her computer started to display messages from other listeners. It seems that our foreign friend knows some Chinese customs, our red envelope seems to be famous abroad, ah. This host has just quickly skimmed through the love letter, and don't they say all French men are romantic? It seems to be true. As usual, Yudong ignored the messages flooding in and continued with a teasing tone, Tomorrow I'll help you donate this money to the Red Cross. Thank you for donating your help to the children. Now let's read the letter. It's a love poem. It's from Paul Eluja, a future famous French poet, and it called, I have no wish but to love you. Jeanine VK de Tamer. Jeanine VK de Tamer. Un origin plit la vallée. Un poisson la rivière. Je t'ai fait à la tale de ma solitude. Le monde entier pour se cacher. Des jours d'inwits pour se comprendre. Pour ni plus renvoi dans tsiux. Case que je pense de toi. Et d'un monde et un image. Et des jours et d'inwits riddles parts pour peers. I have no other desire than to love you. A storm filled the valley. A fish filled the river. I made you as big as my loneliness. The whole world makes us hide. Day and night so that we can understand each other. In order not to see anything else in your eyes. To only see my image of you. To only see the world in your image. And the days and nights your eyes control. Before her rebirth you dong. There had been a time in her life where had been obsessed with French movies. She learned some French but wasn't very good at it. Only learning proper pronunciation. So you dong was able to read the poem naturally and shocked every one person at the other end of the radio who had been listening to Midnight Phantom. Even if they didn't understand the meaning of the poem, they were sucked in by Yudong's hypnotizing voice. When Yudong started reading out the Chinese version of the poem, the computer blew up again with many messages popping up. The host is so op, she can actually read French. How many languages do radio hosts have to understand nowadays? What a beautiful voice. The love poem is so beautiful. I also want to have a secret lover. Yudong smiled after reading the messages and said, Frank's girl if you're listening in, you should have received the full extent of his love. Such a lovely boy shouldn't be dismissed so easily. Ah, dot. Today's program seemed to have been centered round love. As we're nearing the end of tonight's show, Fish Jelly suddenly thought of a phrase. Yudong said, I'm waiting for someone who can put a stop to my loneliness, so that when I listen to sad love songs with them, it won't make me want to cry. If you meet such a person, please don't let them go, you've probably fallen for them already. Yudong said with a smile, okay, that's where Midnight Phantom will end for today. Fish Jelly will talk to you same time, tomorrow. Xia Feng held a cup of honeyed water in his hand as he nested on the sofa listening to Yudong talk about love. Even though the poem was for a girl some stranger secretly loves, Xia Feng still ended up listening to Yudong in fascination. As if his honeyed water turned into wine, Xia Feng's heart became drunk with love. Dot. Hey, you just got back too? Yudong was surprised when she came through the door and saw Xia Feng still sitting on the sofa. Xia Feng turned to look at Yudong and noticed that she was wearing clothes he had never seen before. So he asked, Did you buy new clothes, like it? Yudong changed her slippers and said, I spent all my money on this dress, that's why I asked you to help me with the restaurant bill. I'm sorry I couldn't go there myself today. Hearing what Yudong said, Xia Feng remembered what happened during dinner time. It's nothing. Dr. Xia said your boss needed to talk to you about something important. Yudong said. It was about me going to the United States in an exchange program. Xia Feng explained. Every year our hospital does a study exchange at Edwards Hospital in the United States. I wouldn't have qualified this year, but thanks to the files you translated for me last time, 
my presentation managed to pique the interest of some American experts, so I won a spot. I just translated your papers, in the end what got their interest was your research. Yu Dong asserted. Well, thank you anyway. Xia Feng said seriously. Yu Dong rolled her eyes and said, then when you go to America, get me something. Okay. Xia Feng didn't even think about it, what do you want? Some lotions, masks, lipsticks, perfumes. Yu Dong realized that she wanted a lot of things so she simply said, wait a bit, I'll make a list. Okay. Xia Feng smiled, fully prepared to indulge her. Yu Dong was a little sleepy and couldn't help yawning. It is getting a little late, let's go to sleep. Xia Feng said, un, good night. Yu Dong headed towards her room in a daze. Good night. In fact, when Xia Feng came home from a tiring shift, he was already more than a little tired. Even he didn't understand why he ended up on the sofa listening to Yu Dong's broadcast. Yu Dong was a mystery. Instead of being ignorant in the ways of the world, she instead hides a kind of grace and wisdom a young graduate could only hope to have. Thinking of Yu Dong's closing words in her broadcast tonight, Xia Feng couldn't help but wonder if he and Yu Dong could have that sort of relationship someday. The next day at noon in the hospital canteen, Xiao Yifan and Xia Feng were sitting together eating and talking about some of their patients. After a while, Xiao Yifan changed the subject. I listened to Yu Dong's broadcast last night, she's quite versatile. You said she translated your documents into English the other day. Then she goes ahead and reads a French love poem fluently during a live broadcast. Why were you awake in the middle of the night listening to my wife's broadcast instead of being asleep? Hey, you're talking as if I'm Mr. Wang from next door. Xiao Yifan felt a sudden urge to heave at the thought. Suddenly, he realized what Xia Feng just said. Wait, your wife? You call her your... Note Mr. Wang from next door is apparently like a saying or a meme referring to a neighbor who is supposedly sleeping with someone else's wife. My wife? What's wrong with me calling my wife my wife? Xia Feng calmly said, Alas dot I thought you might have been able to resist for a little longer, but I didn't expect that my dear friend had already fallen into enemy hands. Xiao Yifan shook his head and sighed. What the hell are you saying? You sound so shady. Nothing. Xiao Yifan was a little sad as he said this, where do you think my destined girl is? Am I going to stay lonely and alone forever? Xiao Yifan didn't want to keep eating dog food for the rest of his life. Didn't you once boast that half of the nurses were crushing on you? I'll have you know, I am a man of principle. Xiao Yifan shook his head and said, I never date co-workers. If we break up, it would be so awkward working together. Ring. Xia Feng picked up his phone and when he saw that it was Yu Dong calling, he quickly answered. Xia Feng are you in the hospital right now? Yes. I have a friend who's not feeling well. She's in terrible pain. Can you help me find a place for her to rest for a while? Where are you? Xia Feng stands up. I'm at the outpatient ward. Wait for me. I'm heading out now. Xia Feng talked as he walked away. Where are you going? You haven't finished your food. Xiao Yifan yelled at Xia Feng's rapidly retreating back. Chapter 13 It's not easy to find a girlfriend. When Yu Dong woke up, Xia Feng had already left for the hospital. It was times like these that made her sigh and wonder why some people could sleep so little every day, yet still continue to work for so long. So unscientific. As she only intended to visit Xiao Yu's recording studio, Yu Dong didn't bother putting on makeup as she got ready. On the subway entrance she bought a few buns for brunch. As they just finished dubbing a TV drama the recording studio was quiet. But Xiang Xiaoyu should still be here. Yu Dong was puzzled when she saw the empty front desk and reception room. Xiaoyu. Yu Dong shouted. Where is she? Yu Dong took out her phone to call Xiaoyu, and heard the familiar tone coming from the conference room. When she opened the door Yu Dong saw Xiang Xiaoyu slumped on the conference table, her face full of pain. Xiaoyu. What's wrong? Yu Dong ran over in a panic. It dot hurts. Xiaoyu said feebly, where does it hurt? Abdomen. Yu Dong could barely hear Xiaoyu's weak answer. I'm taking you to the hospital. Yu Dong called for a taxi and rode it with Xiang Xiaoyu all the way to the city hospital. When they arrived at the hospital, Yu Dong was dumbfounded. Sure enough, 
There were no holidays in a hospital, it was very crowded. Yu Dong saw Xiang Xiaoyu's pale face and was very worried about her friend. In the end she felt helpless and decided to call Xia Feng. You know people in the hospital. Xiang Xiaoyu couldn't help but exclaim after listening in on Yu Dong's conversation on her phone. You're in pain and all you care about is that I know someone here? Yu Dong had no words. A, hey, I feel like this is just appendicitis. Xiang Xiaoyu said this then grabbed Yu Dong's hand, if I have to do surgery, remember to tell them that they can't leave a scar. Shut up, Yu Dong was angry. Dong Dong, you don't care about me at all. Xiaoyu felt wronged. You, Yu Dong was about to answer when Xia Feng arrived and upon seeing her, called out, Yu Dong, Xia Feng. She waved at him. Xia Feng ran over towards her and saw a beautiful woman beside Yu Dong with a painful expression. He asked in concern, Where are you aching? Here. Xiaoyu pointed at her stomach. Xia Feng pressed at Xiang Xiaoyu's belly and asked, What about here? Does it hurt here? No. Xiaoyu shook her head then said, It was hurting on the way to the hospital but for some reason it doesn't hurt anymore. Summer breeze runs over a few paces and sees a gorgeous looking woman beside Winter with painful white lips. She asks with concern, Where do you ache? Xia Feng stood up, looked at Yu Dong and said, Don't worry, it should be acute appendicitis. Handsome man. Do I need to do surgery? Xiaoyu was still thinking about the possibility of scars. Shut up. Is your life more important than some scarring? Yu Dong was still astounded. Scarring. Then just leave your appendix inside then. Well, the pain had already left. But no. Xiaoyu suddenly felt more stomach pains. Ha ha. It'd be impossible to not undergo surgery, but I can tell the doctor to be extra careful so any scarring would be minimal. Xia Feng then turned and asked Yu Dong. Have you registered? Not yet. Yu Dong had been too frazzled to think properly. That's fine. Give me her health insurance card and ID card. I'll do it. Xia Feng said. Go on, quickly give me your ID card. Yu Dong got Xiaoyu's bag, luckily she remembered to take it when they left. Wait a bit, I'll have a nurse come and pick you up. A little while, a petite nurse came over with a wheelchair and pushed Xiang Xiaoyu directly into a double ward. The nurse gave Xiang Xiaoyu an four drip, explaining that it was painkiller. Xia Feng returned after a while and handed the ID card back to Yu Dong saying, I've registered her and a doctor should arrive soon. I still have a few other patients, so I'll be heading back. Okay, thank you for coming, I know you're very busy. Yu Dong hurriedly said, call me if you need anything. Xia Feng smiled then turned to Xiaoyu to say, I told the doctor, rest assured, any scarring will be minimal. Thank you, handsome, Xiaoyu shouted as Xia Feng left. So loud, aren't you in pain? Yu Dong was exasperated. I feel a lot better. Xiaoyu regained her spirits, and naturally started to gossip. Who was that handsome guy? Not just handsome, he's a doctor and a gentleman. His voice was super gentle too. What are you planning? Yu Dong asked. This sister's all alone. What do you think? How can I let that excellent specimen go? Said Xiaoyu, introduce me. You yourself think he's a catch. How can I leave him to you? Yu Dong said. Oh, are you aiming for him? Xiang Xiaoyu wasn't discouraged. Then I won't rob you your target. When you catch him though, don't forget to introduce me to one of his colleagues. Dot. Then an old doctor in his fifties came in, looked at Xiang Xiaoyu's situation and said, your condition isn't that serious, I'll slot you in my schedule and do your surgery then, rest assured, Xia Feng told me about your worries, I won't leave you any scars, thank you doctor. Yu Dong thanked him, appendix surgery was a minor operation that only took around one hour to do, at the end of her operation. Xia Feng dropped by again to see how Xiang Xiaoyu was, only leaving once he determined that she would be okay. Yu Dong waited with Xiaoyu until her parents arrived before leaving the hospital. Before she left, Yu Dong dropped by the oncology department, but the nurse informed her that Xia Feng was doing an operation. Dot. When Xia Feng finished the operation, he took out his phone and saw he received a message from Yu Dong, telling him that she had gone home. Xia Feng smiled, replying that he received her message. Today was exhausting. Xiao Yifan stretched on his chair and said, 
How did I become a doctor with this brain of mine anyway? I always thought you've just been just winging it. Xie Feng raised an eyebrow. Thanks to that, I've been a doctor for eight years. Xiao Yifan said sadly, it's only through hard work that I even survived till now. Well, you survived so far. Look at our director. He's been a doctor for 30 years. Keep looking like you know what you're doing and I'm sure you'll last that long too. Hey, stop yelling and let's go eat. Xie Feng gave him a pat as he stood up. The two went to the hospital canteen. Actually, it was already way past the canteen's opening hours, but because doctors had uncertain meal times, the canteen set up a small booth open 24 hours. They saw another person when they arrived and they greeted him. Director Wang. Xie Feng gave a polite greeting to the director. It was Director Wang who did the operation on Yu Dong's friend today. Xie Feng, Yi Fan, you've come to eat. Director Wang laughed. Yes, just finished an operation. Xiao Yi Fan said. Go ahead and eat. Director Wang was just about to leave when he suddenly remembered. He turned to Xie Feng and said, that young girl with appendicitis seems to like chili pepper very much, so remind her to take it easy for now. All right. Xie Feng nodded and said, sorry to have bothered you, it was nothing. It isn't easy finding a girlfriend while being a doctor. Doctors have to care more about others than our personal lives. Besides, treating a beautiful girl wasn't a hassle. After that, Director Wang cheerfully left. What girlfriend, did you don't get sick? Xiao Yifan asked. No, it was Yu Dong's classmate. Is she pretty? Xiao Yifan focused on this. Right, Yu Dong majored in broadcast hosting. Most women majoring in this are beautiful. Is she single? Can you help introduce me? Dot Xie Feng's answer was to just leave. Dot. In the evening, Yu Dong went to work by bus again. The bus driver saw Yu Dong and said enthusiastically, I'll be listening to your broadcast as soon as I get to the terminal. Is that right? Do you like my program? It's really good, I recommended your broadcast to my colleagues, and they all said your voice was very good. Thank them for me. Yu Dong smiled. Even though Yu Dong didn't really expect much when she started hosting the show, anyone would be happy when someone touts your program as their favorite. Yu Dong entered the studio with snacks as usual. Thank you for the food as usual. Senior Yu said happily. Thank you for helping me with the calls usual. Yu Dong replied. Oh, it's nothing. Senior Yu smiled and said. Ah, that's right. There's something I want to show you. Yu Dong looked the paper that Senior Yu passed her. It was the listening rate of different radio stations at various times. She saw that Midnight Phantom was also included in the ratings. First in this time slot. Yu Dong was shocked. Although the listening rate isn't very high, it's still pretty high for a midnight slot. Senior Yu was very happy, as if it was his own program that won first place. Yu Dong was also very happy. So Midnight Phantom featured nothing but light and happy songs that night. Well, it's that time again, we'll pick up another call from the audience. As Yu Dong said these words, Senior Yu motioned that there was already a call. Hello, this is Fish Jelly. Hello Fish Jelly, this is Mr. Strong. Ever since she started calling listeners that didn't want to be named Mr. Strong and M apostrophe S dot beautiful, new callers would start calling themselves the same. Hello, Mr. Dot Strong. Do you have any stories to share with us tonight? I don't, I just wanted to talk to someone. Yu Dong frowned, but still asked, what do you want to say? I don't know what to say. I'm just thinking, the city is so big, but no one wants to listen to me. Said Mr. Strong. Yu Dong suddenly thought of a movie she had seen before her rebirth and asked tentatively, you're not on a rooftop, are you? How do you know? Mr. Dot Strong said, Astonished. You shouldn't have the urge to jump any more then. Yu Dong made her voice as calm as possible. I'm not stupid, why jump off a building? Mr. Dot Strong said. That's good. Yu Dong smiled and said, This conversation just reminds me of a story about a man living alone in the big city. He was very lonely and often comes home from work every day without anyone to talk to but his dog. After a while, he suffered from depression so he started to call a radio station every day to chat with the host, who told him that life should be taken one step at a time, so the man took one step out of the rooftop. Dot there was a sudden silence on the other end of the phone. 
The message area also had nothing but a wolf howling. Listeners started condemning Fish Jelly for telling them a chilling midnight horror story. Fish Jelly, listening to your story made me feel like I'm not in such a miserable situation after all. There seems to be people who are much more vulnerable than me. You can be rest assured, I won't step out of the rooftop. I'm going to go home now. Mr. Dot Strong said, as if he just had an epiphany. Good luck to you. Fish Jelly hung up the phone and said tonight's closing remarks. Do you all remember what I said at the end of yesterday's show? If life is making you feel lonely, then you must remember, there's someone out there waiting for you. When you finally meet, you'll be able to ward off the lonely cold with each other's warmth. After two hours of live broadcasting, Yu Dong left the broadcast station. Xie Feng was standing quietly at the gate waiting for Yu Dong to approach, smiling and handing her a cup of milk tea. Why do you come? Yu Dong was surprised Xie Feng came by. I just got off work and decided to stop by. Xie Feng didn't mention that he parked his car nearby before she even started her broadcast and quietly listened for the full two hours. You work such long hours, you should be back at home sleeping as much as possible. Yu Dong felt distressed. I'm not going to work tomorrow anyway. Xie Feng said. Hearing this, Yu Dong felt a little better but said, you can't keep doing this, you've only slept for a few hours these days. Xie Feng suddenly laughed. What are you laughing at? I just remembered what Director Wang said, Xie Feng told her with a smile. He said it's not easy for us doctors to find girlfriends, so we should treasure them more. So you came to pick me up? I came to pick you up and specially bought you some hot milk tea. In the end no matter how far we go, we'll inevitably be missing home because there's always someone who'll be thinking of you. Chapter 14 Can you not tease me? Dressed in formal clothes, Yu Dong was standing in front of the city TV station doors while she spoke to Xiang Xiaoyu over the phone. I've arrived, calm down. Come on Dong Dong, don't be so nervous, I believe in you. Xiaoyu shouted through the phone. Yes, yes, I got it. Yu Dong was exasperated as she ended the call. What nervous. In her previous life this sister signed numerous contracts worth millions, contracts that would truly frighten you. How can this small film dubbing contract make me nervous? Early this morning, Yu Dong was awakened by an agitated Xiaoyu. It turns out she had worked tirelessly for the past few weeks trying to get the chance to dub the Chinese version of some Hollywood movie. International directors are usually very busy, but Xiaoyu somehow managed to squeeze an appointment with the other party at 11 o'clock this morning at a TV station where they were doing some publicity shows. Unfortunately, Xiaoyu was hospitalized recently and now couldn't make it to the appointment. So she made an urgent call to Yu Dong begging her to go to the appointment. I'll miss you from Xiaoyu Studios. A middle-aged man with a Cantonese accent asked. Yes, hello. Yu Dong had been waiting at the lobby and at this remark, stood up and politely shook the man's hand, are you Jack? Yes, I'm sorry I kept you waiting, the director Mr. Steven's assistant, Mr. Jack, said, Mr. Steven just finished his interview and is he's now at the station cafe having coffee. You can go ahead and talk to him about your proposal now. Yu Dong nodded, picking up her proposal and followed Jack. Soon they arrived at the cafe on the fifth floor of the TV station and was introduced to Mr. Stephen. Note I'm making any English conversation in italics from now on. Hello Mr. Stephen, I'm Yu Dong from Xiaoyu Studio. Please just call me Fish. Yu Dong said in fluent English. Nice to meet you. Director Stephen stood up and shook hands with Yu Dong. Thank you for taking time off your busy schedule to talk to us. Please let me show you the sincerity of our company. Your movies themes expressed. If you let our company dub your movie, I believe our cooperation will produce wonderful results. Yu Dong took out the prepared proposal and placed it on the table. You've seen my movies. Director Stephen was surprised. Yeah, I love this movie. Yu Dong smiled. You know this movie well. You're quite knowledgeable about my intentions in this movie, Miss Fish. What Yu Dong had just elaborated seemed to be exactly what Mr. Stephen wanted to express in the film. If you give this movie to me, I'll definitely retain your ideals. Yu Dong had seen this movie several times in her past life as she really liked the plot. Yu Dong also read all the fan comments and theories, 
including Mr. Stevens' own exposition of the film. I'd be happy to collaborate with your company. Mr. Stevens smiled and held out his hand. Thank you. We'll work very hard to make it perfect. It seems that she had successfully negotiated. After the contract was signed, Jack came up to them, reminding Mr. Dot Steven that it was time to record the show. I like you, Miss Fish. Mr. Steven stood up and said goodbye you dong, your name's very cute, and you're quite knowledgeable with films. Thank you. Yu dong politely stood and sent Mr. Steve off. When he was left, she picked up the signed contract and turned around to laugh confidently and proudly. This was how Yu Dong celebrated each successfully signed contract in her past life. You were awesome just now. Suddenly a pleasant male voice was heard. Yu Dong turned around and her face suddenly sunk. They really were inevitable enemies, how is it that they end up meeting whenever she turns a corner? Fang Huandl Zen were already sitting at the cafe before Yu Dong arrived. They sat on the table next to Mr. Stephen and because their backs were facing Mr. Stevens' table, Yu Dong never noticed the two. But the two men heard Yu Dong's conversation from the beginning to the end and was very impressed. In just ten minutes she successfully got a contract many dubbing studios were drooling over. Fang Hua couldn't believe it. How can Yu Dong transform into a total stranger after their breakup in just one month? From a silly girl who can waste the day away? to a strong woman with great self-confidence and an elegant temperament, although Zheng was also surprised at how much Yu Dong changed, he didn't know Yu Dong that well, all he knew about Yu Dong was her recent actions, so he couldn't help but praise her, why are you here? Yu Dong asked with malice, Fang Hua hated Yu Dong's tone, his face darkened, but he didn't say anything, we work here, Zheng wasn't bothered and answered with a smile, oh, Yu Dong suddenly said, that's right, you used to work in this TV station. Your English accent is so good. How do you practice? Asked Lzane. I watch American dramas one this sister can't tell you that she was sent to work in the United States in five years time. Nonsense. You only watch Korean dramas. Fang Hua shouted in his heart. Really? I like watching American dramas too. Which drama are you watching now? Lzane's eyes sparkled as he asked. This gentleman. Don't act so familiar with me, okay? I don't even remember your name. Just as Yu Dong was about to spout some excuse to leave, a familiar voice sounded at the entrance of the cafe. Yu Dong? A fat, middle aged woman stood at the door looking incredulously at Yu Dong. Teacher? Yu Dong was also very surprised. She unexpectedly met her teacher after several years. Yu Dong's teacher was called Lin Lin and she was the one who recommended Yu Dong to the radio station she currently works at. In her previous life, her teacher never blamed her or lectured her when she didn't go to the job interview. In fact, when Yu Dong was struggling to make ends meet, her teacher often introduced her to many dubbing gigs just so she could pay rent. So suddenly meeting her teacher again for the first time in ten years. Yu Dong was very happy. It's really you. Teacher Lin couldn't believe it. Wow, I haven't seen you for a while. How did this sparrow suddenly transform into a phoenix? What are you talking about? I've always been a phoenix. This is just a phoenix being reborn from the ashes. Yu Dong said cheerfully. Well, you should have told me about your eyes. The TV station had recently been looking for a beautiful hostess. I should have recommended you. Teacher Lin groaned. But I prefer radio. Yu Dong blinked. Oh, so you like it? Teacher Lin laughed and didn't pressure Yu Dong, instead changing the subject. How come you're in this station? I helped Xiaoyu's studio with something. Did you know Xiaoyu started a dubbing studio? Yu Dong smiled. Yes. Why didn't that girl come herself? She's in the hospital for appendicitis. Yu Dong said. Oh dot she must have suffered. Teacher Lin knew that Xiang Xiaoyu was a delicate girl. How about you teacher? How come you're here? Yu Dong asked. The TV station invited me to train some people. Teacher Lin shook her head and said, Nowadays newcomers just look good, their Mandarin is atrocious. Ha ha. Are you busy? Let's have some lunch and let Xiaoyu treat us. Yu Dong laughed. Okay, let's go. Teacher Lin agreed, then turned towards Fang Huan said, you guys come along too. Before they answered, Yu Dong unhappily cut in. Teacher Lin, if they go, I won't go. What happened? 
Teacher Lin was surprised and said, What's wrong with Fang Hua? We broke up. You know me, when I break up with someone they become my enemy. If he comes with us, I won't be able to resist throwing a bowl of soup all over his face. Ah? Didn't they tell everyone they were going to get married? What happened? Teacher Lin was flabbergasted. You dong. Fang Hua shouted angrily. What? Yu Dong glanced at him coldly. Yu Zheng became embarrassed as the situation progressed and finally had to intervene. He grabbed Fang Hua and said, Teacher Lin, we'll have to decline. We still have a lot of work to do. At this, Teacher Lin nodded and escaped the awkward situation with Yu Dong. Your ex-girlfriend has that kind of personality? No one knew when Li En arrived, but she suddenly appeared and said, She doesn't seem to be the type of person who would settle down. You would have been dumped sooner or later anyway. I dumped her. Fang Hua said angrily. Really? Lena said incredulously, before leaving with her coffee. Why doesn't anyone believe me? Fang Hua said till Zen. I believe you. Zheng tried to appease him. Yes. At last, someone actually believed the truth. But it isn't very gentlemanly of you to tell everyone that you dumped your girlfriend. Zheng advised patting Fang Hua's shoulder. Dot why are you making me panicky? After she had lunch with teacher Lin, Yu Dong went to the hospital. As soon as Yu Dong entered the ward, she dumped the contract on Xiang Xiaoyu's lap. Xiaoyu was doubtful until she saw the signature on the contract, causing her to suddenly shout, Ah, ouch, what is it? What happened? The nurse rushed in, then seeing nothing amiss, started to lecture. I'm sorry, I'm very sorry. I'll be sure to scold her. Yu Dong apologized profusely before letting the nurse go. Xiang Xiaoyu was still in a little pain, but was excited nevertheless, you actually got the contract. How did you do it? I told you not to worry, it wasn't going to be a problem. Yu Dong took an orange from the bedside table and started to peel. I never thought you'd actually get it, I only managed to get the appointment by sheer luck. Xiaoyu was so excited. If we do a good job with this movie, our studio can actually enter the industry in earnest. We got the opportunity, but you have to choose the dubbing act as well. Yu Dong said, What are you afraid of? There are so many teachers in our school, which one isn't a big shot? Xiang Xiaoyu had already thought ahead. As long as they got the contract, with so many connections through their university, she had never been worried about finding dubbing actors. Yu Dong smiled and asked, How's your stomach? They'll take off my stitches the day after tomorrow. Xiaoyu then sadly said, I won't be able to go to the beach this summer. And I bought a new bikini too. Time passed quickly after that. Soon Xiang Xiaoyu recovered and was discharged from the hospital, and Xia Feng had to go to America. He had a 9 a.m. flight so he didn't need to rush, but it was a particularly hard time for Yu Dong to wake up to, as she usually slept at 3 a.m. At 6.30 a.m., Xia Feng left a note on the refrigerator and quietly left with his suitcase. There were five people going to America for the exchange program. At the airport, except for Xia Feng, everyone else was surrounded by their friends and relatives to see them off. Xia Feng sat alone on a chair next to them, smiling and not talking. Looking at his watch, Xia Feng decided to head towards the security check. Sure enough. An announcement reminding them of their flight was heard. People started to say their goodbyes, and Xia Feng followed his colleagues towards customs, dragging his suitcase along. Xia Feng. Xia Feng halted and looked back astonished, seeing a panting Yu Dong ten meters away. Xia Feng blinked, inadvertently letting go of his suitcase as he walked towards her. Why are you here? Yu Dot, why didn't you wake me up before you left? Yu Dong woke up at 8 a.m. and when she realized this, she jumped into a taxi and ran almost all the way to the airport. Didn't I say there was no need to send me off? Xia Feng saw the exhausted Yu Dong and couldn't help but reprimand her. Who's sending you off? Yu Dong disagreed, I forgot to give you my list. I'm only here to give it to you. Xia Feng obviously saw through her flimsy excuse, but he didn't weigh anything, only looking at Yu Dong with a gentle smile. Here it is. Dot make sure you buy it all, with the right brands. Yu Dong shoved a piece of paper towards him. I'll be there for three months. I'm sure I'll be able to buy them all. Xia Feng folded the list and placed it in his wallet. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Please note that flight U-807 to New York is about to take off. Please check in as soon as possible. Yu Dong heard the announcement and told Xia Feng, Go on ahead, and call me as soon as you land. You too, every night after work make sure you send me a message. You go home so late at night, I'll get worried if I don't hear from you. That's such a hassle. Yu Dong told him honestly, Eat less junk food. Xia Feng reminded her again, I should be saying that to you. America has so much junk food, you should be the one taking note of this. Yu Dong fiddled with her fingers for a while before suddenly saying fiercely, You dot you're a married man now, don't think you can hook up with people while you're there. Xia Feng startled a moment, then suddenly couldn't help but laugh out loud. You still dare laugh. Yu Dong stared at him, I haven't even hooked up with my own wife. How can I still have the time to hook up with others? When Xia Feng finished saying this, Yu Dong's face turned beet red. I'm going. Xia Feng took back his suitcase and waved at Yu Dong as he headed for customs. Yu Dong continued to stand there, covering her red cheeks and murmuring, Who wants to hook up with you? Ah. Chapter 15 I stirred up my classmate's wedding. After flying for more than 10 hours, Xia Feng and his colleagues arrived and was waiting for their luggage at the carousel. They all turned on their phones and called home. Xia Feng also turned his phone on and thought for a bit. It should be around 10 p.m. in China, and Yu Dong should be getting ready for work. Hello. He heard Yu Dong's voice at the other end saying, You arrived? Xia Feng didn't know if it was just him, but he thought Yu Dong's voice sounded very nice when heard through speakers. Xia Feng unconsciously softens as he replies. Are you about go to work, almost? Yu Dong was currently standing on the balcony, her small figure looking a little lonely. She'd been staring off into the distance, reminded of the nights in her previous life. The atmosphere now was the same as back then, when the hustle and bustle of the city falls, all she's left with are the lights of other, warmer homes. What's wrong? Xia Feng thought Yu Dong's voice felt a little subdued. Nothing? Yu Dong looked up towards the stars. Were there so few stars in Shanghai ten years ago? The house just feels a little too big. The atmosphere doesn't fit. Yu Dong said. Xia Feng was stunned. The house feels big. Is it because I'm not there? Yu Dong do you dot miss me? You must be tired after such a long flight. Sleep early. I should be leaving now. Yu Dong said. All right. Remember to message me after work. Xia Feng warned, all right. Yu Dong hung up the phone and was stunned. Is this the difference between one person living alone and two people living together? There will be someone who'll be thinking of her, who'll be waiting for her text. Reporting to your girlfriend? Asked Li Kikwang, one of his colleagues. Ah? Xia Feng was a little dazed, then finally smiled and nodded. I just finished talking to my girlfriend too, but she didn't care about me at all. She just told me to go to the duty-free shop and help her buy some things. Li Kigwang complained. Xia Feng didn't say anything, he simply smiled. Are you buying something for your girlfriend too? Do you want to go look at the duty-free shop together? Li Kigwang said cheerfully. Why are you buying it so early? Can't you just buy it on the way back? Xia Feng asked, no way. She said she used up all her facial masks so she's waiting for me to buy and send some back. Li Kiguang helplessly said, even thought you can just buy it in China and have it sent by freight. After listening, Xia Feng thought about it. He'll be here for three months. Can you Dong wait that long? We'll go together then. Xia Feng said. So they entrusted their luggage to their other three colleagues and went to the duty-free shop together. Li Kiguang skillfully pulled out his girlfriend's list and took a basket, heading to the skin care counter. Xia Feng saw this and smiled. It seems that women like preparing shopping lists for their boyfriends. Opening his wallet, he took out his own list that was folded inside. When he unfolded it, the first line says, Can you please buy the following items once a day? So you'll think of me every day. Ah, Xia Feng looked at the long list written on the paper, the facial mask Li Kiguang mentioned was also written, which counter sells all these, really? Dot. Today was the engagement party of Ren Xinxin, a good friend of Yu Dong during university. She missed the party in her previous life, but this time she was determined to attend it. Have you come down? I'm nearing the gates of your complex. Xiang Xiaoyu said over the phone, I'll come down now. 
Today was the weekend and the gardens were lively. Yu Dong walked elegantly on high heeled shoes, perfectly highlighting the beautiful environment. The people around her were healed. After all, aesthetically pleasing things always make people happy. Wow, Xi or you couldn't help but praise Yu Dong as she approached. You look hot, look at the security guard. His eyes are still on you. Yu Dong opened the car door and laughed as she got in. I'm attending a party with a beautiful girl. If I don't make an effort to match her, how can I stand next to her? Totally right. Xiang Xiaoyu proudly said, We were the three golden flowers of the broadcasting and hosting major. Today we're going to shock the entire party. Soon the car arrived at its destination, an upscale winery in the suburbs of Shanghai. I never knew Xingxin's family was so well off. Xiang Xiaoyu who was accustomed to such high-class places still couldn't help but marvel at the winery's beautiful landscape. It's probably her husband. Yu Dong looked at the photo of Ren Xingxin and her fiancé, the man, Lu Xuan, looked arrogant. She'd only met him a few times in her previous life. He passes my visual inspection. Xiang Xiaoyu said as she looked at the photo. In what way does he pass? His charisma. Don't you think he has the face of a scum? Yu Dong's tone was peculiar. Hey, don't say that. Xi Oyu frowned and said, This is Xingxin's fiancé. Yu Dong's gaze became heavy as she thought of a few parties she attended in her previous life. She would always see Lu Xuan with a different female companion. Once he even recognized her as Xingxin's classmate and raised a glass towards her with a smile. Let's go find Xingxin. Looking at the white roses decorating the venue. Yu Dong couldn't help but feel the irony. All this was just a way to show off, for other people to envy their so-called happiness. Having a party for the sole purpose of posting pictures of it in moments. Note moments is a thing in WeChat. They passed by rose bushes and colorful balloons, with the occasional breeze dancing between skirts. Who are those beautiful women? A man drinking across the two girls asked Lu Xuan. Lu Xuan turned to look at them and with narrowed eyes said, I don't know, they should be Ren Xingxin's classmates, do you know their background? The man asked, what kind of background can they have? They're recent college graduates, Alan, do you want to try? The man turned around and asked another friend of his, Alan also saw Yu Dong and Xiang Xiaoyu, although he wasn't particularly interested. He didn't want to spoil his friend's interest so he raised an eyebrow and smiled. I'll follow you then. So they left Lu Xuan and headed towards the wandering Yu Dong and Xiang Xiaoyu. Hello, beautiful ladies. The man stood in front of them and smiled. I'm Lin Hu Yuan, the director of marketing in Hu Yuan Group. Hu Yuan Group? Your name is Lin Hu Yuan? Are you the boss of Hu Yuan Group? Xiaoyu asked doubtfully. Lui Hu Yuan simply smiled. He just needed to say his name and people would make wild guesses themselves. He's not the boss, he's just a young master. If it wasn't for his father, how can he still be the director? Yu Dong knew what they wanted as soon as they approached. Alan raised his eyebrows in surprise. Beautiful woman, how can you question my virtue like this? Lin Hu Yuan became unhappy. I happened to meet Miss Kin at the entrance. Yu Dong laughs. If you talk to us again, I'm thinking that any future collaboration you have with the Kin family might just disappear into thin air. Note the above sentence is totally wrong, but MTL isn't giving me jack, comma comma. Lin Hu Yuan's face instantly darkened. Alan was also stunned. Let's go. Yu Dong pulled Xiaoyu away. What did you mean by that? Who's Miss Kin? Asked Xiaoyu. Kin is his fiancée, damn. How dare he try to turn me into a scummy mistress. Are you finally admitting you semicolon rear slack? Yu Dong raised an eyebrow. Lu Xuan saw Lin Hu Yuan come back with a dark look in his face and asked, What's wrong? The beauty has thorns. Alan laughed. Lu Xuan raised an eyebrow. He didn't think Ren Xingxin's friends would be so fierce. After a while, the two women reached the dressing room and Xiaoyu directly pushed the door open, excitedly shouting, Xingxin we're here. Ren Xingxin was surprised, her red rimmed eyes drained at Xiang Xiaoyu. When Yu Dong saw Ren Xingxin's miserable expression, her face darkened, sure enough. What's wrong? Xiaoyu frowned. Nothing? Ren Xingxin quickly wiped away her tears and smiled. 
you've come. Both of you look so beautiful today. Don't try to change the subject. What's going on? Xiaoyu said angrily. It's fine. My mother just came by and said a few things. I couldn't help crying. Ren Xinxin said. Oh dot I guess aunt is reluctant to part with you. Xiang Xiaoyu thought this was the case and started to comfort the, but it's okay, you're only getting engaged. Marriage is a ways later, un. Ren Xinxin nodded with a smile. Was it really aunt that made you cry? Yu Dong stepped forward, picking up an orange to peel casually. She tentatively continued. I saw Lu Xiuan at a bar last night. There were several beautiful women hanging off him. What? Xiang Xiaoyu was shocked. Maybe dot it was just a bachelor party. Ren Xinxin said sadly. Later, I happened to pass by an open room and... Yu Dong lowered her voice and whispered, 3P. No way. Xiaoyu looked at Yu Dong incredulously, why didn't you kick his ass? I didn't know he was Xinxin's fiancé until I saw the photo today. Yu Dong looked at them innocently. Ren Xinxin bit her lip, but her tears finally fell. Xiang Xiaoyu looked outraged, while Xinxin stayed silent as she cried. Xinxin from the very beginning always felt like the type of person who wouldn't resist even when she's being bullied. You're not getting married. Xiaoyu shouted, let that scum man die. No, no way. Ren Xinxin cried, my mother won't agree. Your mother? Why would aunt disagree? Xiaoyu asked, I am pregnant with Lu Xiuan's child. Dot Yu Dong and Xiang Xiaoyu looked at each other. Yu Dong just looked shocked, but Xiang Xiaoyu looked like she was about to explode. You're pregnant and he's still doing this to you. That day, Mother Lu asked me to give Lu Xiuan something. When I arrived at Lu Xiuan's apartment, I found him drunk. Then, Ren Xinxin sobbed, when he woke up. He said I seduced him and said I had no choice but to marry him, bastard. Xiang Xiaoyu looked seconds away from running out and committing real life park. Note a gaming term, short for player killer. And then you got pregnant? You told your mother, and then aunt went to Lu Xiuan's mother? So that's why this party was arranged. This was easy to guess as Yu Dong knew the kind of person Ren Xinxin was. Ren Xinxin nodded and said, Our two families have been neighbors since we were children. Mother Lu always doted on me. But when Father Lu's business became more successful dot she still likes me but my relationship with Lu Xiuan wasn't as close as back then. He started to say that I was only interested in his family's money. But I don't care about all that. While my family isn't rich and noble. We weren't unsatisfied. Earlier he came in and told me to give birth to the baby and stay at home. He said when we get married I should just take care of his mother. Ren Xinxin recalled Lu Xiuan's cold eyes and became frightened, shouting, Xiaoyu Dong Dong, I don't want to get married, I don't want to get married like this. Then we won't. Xiang Xiaoyu embraced Ren Xinxin like a fierce mother. If things had continued this way, Ren Xinxin will commit suicide in two years. Miss Ren, the ceremony is about to begin. A staff member knocked and urged them. Xinxin, I'll take you away. Yu Dong looked at the nervous and frightened Ren Xinxin and said, If you don't want to get engaged and don't want to be that Lu Xiuan's woman, you have to face him and firmly reject him. Escaping would only make you look like an unscrupulous woman. I. Xinxin timidly looked at the floor. Xinxin. People have to make decisions for themselves. Yu Dong said. Dot. The two girls accompanied Ren Xinxin as they walked in the venue. The ceremony had begun and Lu Xiuan was on the stage, looking regal and noble. The MC saw Ren Xinxin and shouted, Our heroine has finally arrived. Suddenly, all the guests applauded. Ren Xinxin took a deep breath and stepped on the stage, standing opposite Lu Xiuan. The MC then said, what a lovely woman. Now why don't we listen to their love story? Who wants to talk first? I'll go first. Ren Xinxin suddenly said. Happy laughter burst from under the stage, and Lu Xiuan looked at Ren Xinxin with a hint of mockery. Ren Xinxin's heart finally broke completely. She took the microphone from the MC and said, Lu Xiuan, we've known each other for almost 20 years, my earliest memories had always included you but today. A sarcastic smile appeared in Lu Xiuan's face as he listened to Ren Xinxin. Let's break up. Ren Xinxin laughed with tears in her eyes. Wow! 
The crowd was shocked and became a mess. You. Lu Xuan grabbed Ren Xinxin and frowned. Did you this intentionally? Yu Dong and Xiangxi or you flew up the stage like arrows. One pulled Ren Xinxin away while another blocked Lu Xuan. Looking at Lu Xuan's angry face, Yu Dong said, Mr. Lu, for the first time in your life, let yourself be dumped by a woman. Keep your composure. The three people then left, and soon the news of a group's heir being publicly abandoned by their fiancé caused a buzz in the news for several days. So when Xiaofeng sent an email innocently asking what she had been doing recently, Yu Dong honestly answered, I made the headlines.